We already talked about the best individual hitter from every single team in Major League Baseball. If you missed that, it will be in the description down below. But now we're going to go ahead and make part two, where we talk about the best pitcher from every single team. So is Walker Buehler better than Clayton Kershaw going into 2020? Has Steven Strasburg officially leapfrogged Max Scherzer? We're going to talk about that right now. If you want to see more baseball videos or if you just like baseball in general, leave a like on the video, subscribe because we talk about it every single day. Without further ado, let's just get into it. We're going to go ahead and start off with the American League in today's video and by default for the Baltimore Orioles I think you have to go with John Means in 2019 he actually had a pretty good season although his win-loss record wouldn't really show that now I want you guys to pay attention I will not be talking about wins or losses in today's video because they're really meaningless if you're talking about pitchers he made his first all-star team he was also second in rookie of the year I truly think that if the Orioles are gonna be good going forward John Means is gonna have to do his thing Adley Rutschman is gonna have to carry the team offensively but John John Means is the best pitcher from the Orioles, and it's really not even close. I don't think it's fair to give Brandon Workman the best pitcher spot for the Boston Red Sox, although he did have an elite season. I still think going into 2020, the title has to belong to Chris Sale. If you guys did not know, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up his baseball reference real quick. He has the all-time record for most strikeouts per win. He usually has about 5.37 strikeouts per win, which is an all-time record. Even though he was injured for the majority of 2020, he still had a 13.3 strikeouts per nine. So I think Sale, if he can come back even just a little bit healthy and do his thing, I'm going to see that ERA come below four. And honestly, what, what's not to love about Chris Sale? He throws hard. He's got a funky windup. He destroys lefties. I think he's going to return to form and be the best pitcher for the 2020 Boston Red Sox. The $324 million man, Garrett Cole, unfortunately is not going to get all that money because of what the owners are doing to the players. It is so disgraceful. I can't believe this is happening. We might not even have baseball in 2020, but if there is, I think that we can universally agree that Garrett Cole is the best pitcher on that Yankee staff. He's better than Luis Severino, even though Severino, he has shown a lot of promise. He's better than James Paxton. Some would argue that Aroldis Chapman is more valuable because he's coming in at the end of games and shutting it down. I don't think so. Garrett Garrett Cole in 2021, let's just go ahead and fast forward to that, I guess, if you want to have a full 162 game schedule. I think he can be a 300 strikeout guy again with a sub three ERA. He's going to be a workhorse for the next decade. I haven't really talked about stats in today's video, but Charlie Morton is Justin Verlander 2.0. As you guys can see by that pitch, he just made Anthony Santander look like a little leaguer, but just like Justin Verlander, Morton is aging like fine wine. His ERA has gone down in four straight seasons, but his walks per nine have gone down and his strikeouts per nine have gone up. He finished in third in the American League Cy Young and also 21st in the MVP. So I think by default, he has to be the best pitcher on the Tampa Bay Rays. And honestly, it's not close. I almost royally screwed up in picking the best pitcher from the Blue Jays. I almost went with Ken Giles, forgetting that Hung Jin Ryu just signed with the Toronto Blue Jays. In back-to-back -back seasons, he's been electric. A 1.97 ERA in 2018, a 2.3 to ERA in 2019. He finished in second in the Cy Young. I thought that he was going to really run away with it, but then Jacob deGrom decided to become Cy Young version of himself all over again en route to winning his back-to-back -back Cy Young. But if we're talking about someone that is really going to carry the Blue Jays staff, Hung Jin Ryu has to be the number one guy, but I do like Giles. It's actually crazy how much Lucas Giolito improved from 2018 to 2019. If we take a look at 23 years old in 2018, he led baseball. Actually, he was the worst in baseball with a 6.13 ERA and a 6.5 strikeouts per nine. All of a sudden, he becomes elite with a 3.41 ERA. He has an 11.6 strikeouts per nine, and he dropped his walks per nine by almost two walks per game. So I don't know what got into this guy. His talent has always been sky high, which is not fun for me as an Indians fan because there's, their lineup is absolutely stacked. And now that Lucas Giolito is on top of his game and they're going to get Michael Kopech back, I do not want to be on... Yeah, the White Sox are going to be good. The only reason why the Cleveland Indians felt comfortable in trading two-time Cy Young Award winner Corey Kluber is because of their top two young guys, Shane Bieber, and in my opinion, the best pitcher going into 2020 for the Tribe, Mike Clevenger. He had a 2.71 ERA in 2019. He was injured, but even then, when he was healthy, a 12.1 one strikeouts per nine is absolutely electric. He had 170 strikeouts and 126 innings. So if he can stay healthy, I think his ceiling is a little bit higher than Shane Bieber's. Matthew Boyd is one of the more confusing pitchers in all of baseball. He led the American League in home runs given up, but he also almost had 240 strikeouts. So by default, 
I don't know, he's the best Tigers pitcher, probably. Ian Kennedy, back in 2011, had a pretty good season as a starting pitcher with the Arizona Diamondbacks. He had a 21-4 and record, but we all know wins and losses don't really count, but a 2.88 ERA, that's pretty solid. The next decade kind of went by, and he hasn't really been able to live up to that specific year, but in 2019 for the Royals, he had a 3.41 ERA as their closer, had a pretty good season, and honestly, for 2020, I think he's going to get even better and be their full-time guy. The best pitcher for 2020 for the Minnesota Twins is going to be Jose Barrios. Now, again, these are just my opinions. If you think that Jake Odorizzi or Sergio Romo have more value to the club, please let me know in the comment section down below. But as you guys can see, the stuff that Barrios has is almost unmatched. I don't really understand why his strikeouts per nine went down from 2018 to 2019, but his athleticism, it's there. This play alone, I mean, you got to put him ahead of Jake Odorizzi because I don't think that he can make those plays. I'm hoping that he can get his strikeouts up yet again because if he can, he can have a 10 plus strikeouts per nine easily and make my life as an Indians fan pretty miserable. Now this might sound awkward, but I do not think that Justin Verlander should have won the 2019 American League Cy Young. I think that he stole it from Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole was so nasty that he deserved it in my opinion, but you can't take anything away from Justin Verlander simply on the fact that he continues to get better by age. I don't understand it. I mean, he is kind of going the Randy Johnson route of as he ages, he gets better and better and better. Do you think that he's going to have a good 2020 season or do you think that the all of the speculation and the allegations against the Astros are going to make him worse? I think he's going to be dominant. The Los Angeles Angels. This one's going to be a little different because Hanzo Robles is their best pitcher going forward. Andrew Heaney, he's solid, I guess, but I don't think he's going to be as good as maybe someone like Ross Stripling would have been. Can you believe they botched that trade? Ross Stripling and Jock Peterson for a, a guy that doesn't even really play that much, Luis Rangifo. I still don't understand why they took back that trade, but I guess for 2020, we'll go with the guy that almost carried my fantasy team to a championship. Robles, pretty good, saves a lot of games. He's all right. In his first all-star appearance, Liam Hendricks, the only player in Major League Baseball from Australia, broke out with a 1.8 ERA. I think he had upwards of a 12 or 13 strikeouts per nine. Again, just like Lucas Giolito, I don't really understand what happens in the development process. Where they're so bad the year before, I think in 2018, Hendricks had a four plus ERA, not a very high strikeouts per nine. Everything improved in every single aspect when it comes to pitching in Major League Baseball. So Hendricks is gonna be my pick, although Mike Fires, I guess, is pretty decent, but I just don't like the guy. So you know what? We're gonna go with Hendricks over Fires, and I like that pick. Look at him striking out Michael Chavis. That wasn't even close. The only reason why Marco Gonzalez got a lot of money from the Mariners is because he's somewhat reliable. He led the American League in games started with 34 back in 2019. And I guess he had a pretty solid 3.99 ERA. I'm looking at a pitch right now. He's got a pretty nasty changeup. His fastball isn't going to blow you away or anything like that. But if we're talking about the Mariners, they really don't have a lot of prospects or top pitchers in my opinion. So I think by default, Gonzalez, he's going to be my pick. I can't put Corey Kluber ahead of Lance Lynn going into 2020 simply on the basis that Kluber was bad and injured for the Tribe in 2019. And Lance Lynn ended the season with a 7.1 war. He was striking out dudes left and right. And it's not easy to pitch in Texas. So when you can have a 3.5 ERA in that ballpark and actually thrive and get better and better, he's going to be my pick. But I hope that Corey Kluber has a bounce back season because if he's back to Klubot, I'm going to really enjoy watching the Rangers dominate the American League West. Yeah, you heard it. They're going to be really good. Moving on over to the National League, the first team that we're going to talk about is the Atlanta Braves. And as you guys can see, Mike Soroka in 2019 made his first ever All-Star team. He came in sixth place in the Cy Young. A lot of people just don't really believe in Mike Soroka. So I want you guys to let me know in the comment section down below. Do you think that he's going to be able to repeat 2019? I don't really know what to expect. I mean, I'm looking at the clips right now. He's striking out Nelson Cruz. He's striking out guys that don't really strike out all too often often. Eddie Rosario, I guess he does strike out a good amount, but he's making him look silly. He's not a guy that's going to throw 98 to 99 miles an hour, but he's got a good amount of break, and I like him for my number one spot in the Braves. Unfortunately for the Miami Marlins, they don't really have a lot of guys to choose from. Caleb Smith, it doesn't look like he's going to be all that great. Jordan Yamamoto, I believe that's his name. I don't think that his ceiling is the highest either. I mean, maybe when you call up Sixto Sanchez, he could be your saving grace. So I'm going to go ahead and pick number 22, Sandy Alcantara. He throws 100 miles an hour but the craziest part about that is he doesn't strike out the most amount of guys he's got a lot of break it just doesn't end up resulting in a lot of strikeouts I can't really pinpoint as to why now I will say he did lead the National League in complete game shutouts just last season with two of them so he's got the stuff to be really good he just has to strike out more guys 
Do I have to say anything else other than the two words of Jacob followed by DeGrom? Back-to-back -back Cy Young Award winner in the National League, pretty much the second coming of Pedro Martinez. When you're easily the best pitcher on your team and you have teammates like Noah Syndergaard, I mean, Zach Wheeler was on the team last year, and you're that much better, that's saying something. He's insane. In order for Aaron Nola to repeat his 2018 success when he had a 2.37 ERA, he's going to have to command the strikes on a whole lot better than what he did in 2019. His walks per nine went through the roof. He also gave up a whole lot more home runs. I mean, as you guys can see by the clips against the Boston Red Sox, he does strike out a ton of guys. His strikeouts per nine were way up in 2019. But in my opinion, I don't think that Aaron Nola should be focusing on getting the punch out. He needs to focus on limiting the damage, getting as many outs as possible, and not worry about throwing 100 to 98 miles an hour. Just be Aaron Nola from 2018, do your job, and I do think he's the best pitcher over Zach Wheeler. It's wild that Steven Strasburg is not the best pitcher on his own club considering he won the World Series MVP. It still has to be Max Scherzer who in his career has a 170 and 89 record. I know I don't like to point out win loss, but that is insane. A career 3.2 ERA and in a down season had a 2.92 back in 2019, but he also led the National League with a 2.45 FIP and a 12.7 strikeouts per nine. He finished in third in the Cy Young. The dude might win four or five over the course of his career so is he the best on the nationals in my opinion he still has the crown sorry Strasburg if you're a Cubs fan I really want you to hear me out on this one the best pitcher projecting 2020 it's got to be you Darvish right now he was not great in the first half of 2019 I think he had a five ERA but then all of a sudden out of nowhere in the second half the dude became a dominant ace he became your ace I don't want to hear Kyle Hendricks I don't want to hear John Lester you Darvish is your number one starting pitcher going into 2020 he had a 2.71 second half ERA and I think that he's going to carry that momentum into the 2020 season the Cincinnati Reds are going to be sneaky good in this upcoming season again if there is a season. Look at that swing from Francisco Mejia who had a pretty good second half as well. So the fact that he made that good of a hitter look that bad, you know Luis Castillo is special. His changeup is probably the best that we've seen since Ricky Romero of the Toronto Blue Jays. I mean if we take a look at his stats, he had a 3.4 ERA. He had 226 strikeouts. With Sonny Gray and Trevor Bauer, the Reds are going to be really good. This one is going to be super easy. I don't even have to look at the stats because we know that Josh Hader is an elite relief pitcher. And honestly, if they started him as an opener like the Tampa Bay Rays do with their relief pitchers, the Brews, they might have a better chance of winning ball games if they use him more to shut down the top of the order and then bring in a, a somewhat of a starting pitcher. I don't know. He's that special. I mean, he has the record for most strikeouts in nine innings with 25. I know those are relief innings, but still, he's the best the Brewers have. When your best pitcher is Joe Musgrove, um, I, I mean, he's all right. I mean, I don't even... What are the Pirates doing? Can some, If you're a Pirates fan, can you please let me know in the comment section down below why your best pitcher isn't even on the team anymore and Felipe Vasquez and why your second best pitcher could have been Tyler Glass now, but you let him go? What's happening? Do you guys remember back in 2015 when Jake Arrieta had a magical second half? He finished it with a .75 ERA in the second half alone. And Jack Flaherty almost did that a second time. Now, I will say he only had a .96 ERA. I know that is so sky high. But projecting for 2020, he is a lock to be one of the better pitchers in the National League. If he can keep it up, even at 50% of what he did in the second half of last year, that's still a 1.8 ERA. If he can do that again, holy smokes. I want to formally apologize to the best 2020 Diamondbacks pitcher, Luke Weaver, because back when Paul Goldschmidt was traded for Luke Weaver and Carson Kelly, I was thinking to myself, what did they just do? Paul Goldschmidt is a perennial all-star and MVP candidate. Why would they trade him for a couple prospects? I could not be any more wrong. I think it was a win-win for both teams. Weaver in 2019, although he only started in 12 games, he had a 2.94 ERA. He had a plus nine strikeouts per nine. I mean, that's really good. And the fact that Carson Kelly, his battery mate, was really good as well. I like to trade for both sides, and I think that in 2020, he's going to be better than Madison Bumgarner, so remember that name, Luke Weaver, especially if you're running a fantasy league.
If you're a Rockies fan, I know you want to go towards John Gray, but let me tell you one name real quick. Scott Oberg, in his last 114 innings as a Colorado Rock, you know that it's hard to have a low ERA if you're playing in Coors Field almost half the time. He's had a 2.35 ERA in his last 114 innings pitch. So for right now, I think he's a little bit more valuable because he gets the job done pretty much every single time for the Rockies. Walker Bueller is the best pitcher going forward, and that means he is just ahead of Clayton. Kershaw. Don't get me wrong. I think that Clayton Kershaw is still a very good pitcher, but in the postseason, they're completely different stories. Bueller, he's been, he has shown that he can throw 98 to 99 miles an hour in the seventh inning of a, a championship series game. He strikes out guys left and right. His FIP was actually lower than Clayton Kershaw, even though Kershaw's ERA was a tad bit lower in 2019. So FIP is a really good stat to look forward to and project going forward. So Bueller, he's my number one guy for the Dodgers. Kirby Yates is going to be my pick for the Padres simply because I need to see a little bit more from Chris Paddock. I do also agree with you guys that he has a very high ceiling as a young starting pitcher, but I need a little bit more considering how good Kirby Yates has been the last couple seasons. He's been absolutely electric and, dare I say, dominant. Hey, struck him out and the Padres win. Kirby Yates does get the four out save. The San Francisco Giants are a tough team as well because they just let go of Madison Bumgarner, who probably would have been my pick, even though Johnny Cueto talent-wise is probably their best pitcher. He had a really bad 2019, although he only started in four games. Over the course of his career, he has been solid. I just, I want him to return to form, even if he's 80 to 85% of what he was. I don't know, man. This video did hurt my brain because, ah, oh, these take so much effort and so much research, and I just want to make sure that I give you guys the best video possible. So if you disagree with any of my picks, maybe it was the last one. Maybe you think that Kevin Gosman is going to be better than Johnny Cueto. I don't know. The Giants have a really bad pitching rotation. But thank you so much for watching. If you made it to this point in the video, go ahead and leave a like on it and subscribe for more baseball content. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. If you're bored and want to watch some more content, two videos are on the screen right now. And also, do not forget to follow me over on Twitch. We talk about baseball. We play MLB The Show. It's a great time. I'll catch you guys there. Have a wonderful day.